Last episode, we did our entirety of the round the cliff. I fudged it. Sorry, I'm just gonna get this, uh, I gotta get this flippin' intro in here. I can start today. Yo, welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Let's Play series, and I'm struggling to stay on this moss carpet here, but... Last episode, we did the entirety of around the hole right here, doing a little bit of a cliff face. Today, I would like to focus a little bit more attention towards the castle again, because there's obviously quite a bit to fill in here. Let's throw on some shaders here in a minute. Give it a second. All right, so you can kind of see where I have all the end rods and stuff like that today. I would like to kind of fill it out a little bit more, because obviously on the side here, when we look at our castle, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. I have like nothing built out here. I also got to build the uh, the throne room, and I got to carry around the wall here. But now that we have ourselves a consistent palette, and we know exactly what resources we need to farm, among other things, that means that we have a little bit of a guideline to start working with. So. Let's go ahead and get that started. When it comes to resources that we're gonna need for today, we're gonna need a lot of quartz, obviously. We're gonna need to make ourselves a bunch of chisel quartz moving forward. So we have a we have ourselves a bunch of smooth quartz, but do we have a bunch of regular quartz as well? Not really. So we're gonna have to buy that from villagers. We have next to no uh, quartz pillars. Oh, never mind. We have a lot of uh, quartz pillars, so we should be okay for the quartz pillars. And then, of course, I grabbed ourselves the box of lapis that we're going to have to continue to keep filling up. And then how are we looking on blue wool right now? Blue wool should be fine. And then yellow concrete. What are we looking at? I know I have a bunch of yellow concrete over there. Yellow concrete could be an issue. So let's go start trading for all these resources. And for you number folks out there, we've gone through about almost 69,000 villager trades since we started this project. We're probably gonna finish around 100,000. All right, when it comes to lapis, we've been buying some lapis over the last week or so. So we have ourselves a full shulker box of lapis, and then I'm gonna continue to keep buying lapis as we go. As for just regular blocks of quartz, that's a work in progress. One of the resources that we're going to need today is going to be yellow concrete, and we've got one slight problem. I'm out of TNT, so we're gonna have to craft some more. But for right now, I can go ahead and start loading up all the concrete that we crafted into our machine here. Then I'll go craft up a bunch of TNT, which I'm gonna need probably a little bit more sand in order to do. Well, turns out I actually had a little bit of sand in here, so hopefully that's enough to craft up about nine stacks of TNT. We'll see what happens here. But you know, since we don't duplicate TNT, it's a little bit more of a uh, little bit more of a process in order to get all the TNT that we're going to need for today. But shouldn't it be that bad? It's not that uh, expensive of a resource now, is it? So I only need nine stacks. Got ourselves a bunch of TNT now. Just gonna kind of load up the system here, and we're gonna go make some concrete now. And with a quick five minutes worth of work, I got myself almost a full shulker box of yellow concrete with a lot more that we could get if I can make this jump. A lot more that we could get later on today if we need more. Only took about a half an hour, but we also got ourselves a full shulker box of end rods, so we'll see how long that lasts. Hey, uh, this right here. Zuolan 888 just redeemed Ascend. Ascended being of futuristic worlds. Well, there you have it. We're going through our end tunnel. We're gonna make our way over to the end with shaders on. Zoo is just ascended as the ascended being of future worlds, which is really cool. So we're gonna head on over to the end and we can get him a fancy new banner and all that kind of stuff. So I'll show you guys exactly how that's done. Oh, almost missed my ride.
Welcome to our end hub. As a little bit of a tradition, every time somebody ascends, we go over to the end, we go over to our board of celebrations, and we let them pick a banner. I'll show you guys exactly how that's done. So we're in the end hub now. And we get the rip around, and we're going to make our way over to the God of Celebrations. And you can kind of take in a little bit of the ascensions that we have nearby as we go over and get Zoo his brand new banner for his Hall of Fame plot. Which one of these bad boys do you want? For those of you guys who are wondering, I'm also live streaming right now. I record all the live streams. While uh, Zoo is uh, deciding which one he wants to be a part of, we're going to add him to the book. Everybody in here that you guys are seeing, these are... This is my second book of everybody who has ascended thus far and their title. These are what all of my, uh, my mega builds are based around. So now that we have Zoo in here, post him in here. And Zoo's title is going to be Ascended Being of the Futuristic Worlds. And then we'll add him back up into here. These are all the ascensions that I've completed so far. Not including the two that I'm working on currently. And Zoo wants the middle bottom, please. This blue one right here. There's also a few other things inside this world. Inside of this build in particular. So we have our one year, our two year, our three year, and our four years that we spent in this world. We have our 100k on YouTube. We have our one year without popping a totem. Or we're super close to getting two. And we have our 100k on Twitch. Everything that you guys see here is into the millions. So netherrack, stone, attack, jumping, and everything is all documented down here. So we're working towards stuff progressively. And we also have things like their 5,000, 10,000, and uh, every 5,000 days we put them up into there. So that's exactly what this place is. All right, now with all that said and done, we have all of our resources ready to go. So we got a shulker box of bones. We got our lapis, quartz pillars. A lot of quartz pillars, actually. And then I got two boxes of the, the chiseled quartz, a whole box of end rods, honey, honeycomb, and yellow concrete. So I think we're ready to go. All right, back over here at the build. I plan to do a little bit of, obviously we got to map this place out a little bit better. I want to try to get a little bit of the interior kind of mapped out so I know exactly how big of a throne room we're dealing with. I got the top roof that we need to put in here. We got to put in the side roofs. We got a bunch of stuff to do here. So I got my andesite and I'm ready to go. Probably a little bit difficult to make out here, but I have my tower set up there, 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 and then all the way around. I just need to connect this thing up. But we got ourselves a wandering trader. Don't tell me he's inside it. He is, of course, inside of the cave. I found him. Apparently, he ditched his llama. Anyways, he's over here. I don't know what's going on with these guys, but they always fall into holes and die. So, what do we got here? Oh, we got Armor Cross, finally. Yeah, we got Winnie the Pooh. We got Squirtle Squad. We have a warped wood monster. We have Armor Cross, one of the Ascended. And we have ourselves a um, aristocrat pig. I think that's how you say that. Oh, we do have ourselves at the howling pot. Hmm, decisions, decisions. All right, let's take a look at what we got going on here. So I have Winnie the Pooh, which I, th uh, I thought with that was a really cool one looking one. If I can get over my words here. We have a warped monster, very creepy looking. You guys have already seen the pig and Squirtle, but let me show you guys here one more time. It's a monocle and a Squirtle Squad guy. And then, of course, we have Armor Cross, one of the Ascended. Looking schnazzy, and I think I might actually get that pot. And the Howl pot that we wanted to grab, it's got the little wolf on it, so of course we had to grab that. Okay, so now that I have all of the castle footprint basically mapped out now, I gotta place a bunch of beacons. But we only have six beacons to place, but I'm going to need probably about 24 beacons. If I place one in each corridor right here, I think I can get away with 24 beacons. So we're going to have to go to the end. We're going to have to go restock up on some iron, and we're going to go make ourselves some beacons while we're at it. But in order to make beacons, we're going to need ourselves a bunch of iron. So we're going to come over here to the iron farm so I can make up a bunch of blocks. Obviously, the iron farm is always going since it's inside the spawn chunk, so that shouldn't be an issue. Now that we got 21 stars and a little bit of wither roses. I'm just gonna pop these guys on over here. 
since I think I'm actually kind of running a little bit low on black dyes. So I'm just going to kind of keep these wither roses coming in here and we'll go craft up uh, some beacons. 21 beacons later. I think this brings us up to the total of 27, which I think I only needed 24, but I guess we'll find out. All right. I think that's enough beacons now. Uh, obviously, I always have my beacons turned off when I'm doing a project because this is a little bit overwhelming. But looking back here, I think I've kind of spaced them out enough. I might actually have a little bit of a dead spot right here in the center. But if I can build up the castle for the most part, I might be able to sneak a beacon in right here in the center, maybe in the roof or something like that. So we're going to start off by basically connecting up all these pillars with our... What is this stuff called? Quartz pillar, basically. We're going to put our walls in here. And then we're going to put the honeycomb pattern going all the way across the walls, just like we did over there. And then we're going to be doing the roofs and stuff. Ha, uh, ha, uh, ha, uh, ha. Uh. Get wrecked, nerd. Just want to give you guys a friendly reminder that um, this is what I'm having to deal with over on Twitch. For those of you guys who are watching on YouTube, while I'm building these really cool builds, this is basically what I have to listen to in the background. So thank you to a um, Android. One of my moderators and sleeps a lot. Just another troll inside the chat for making this a, a pleasure. All right. Now that we have the walls all the way around here in a honeycomb pattern, I'm going to start building up where the towers are obviously going to go so I can start working out the different height variations. There goes all of our quartz pillars. Officially have gone through five shulker boxes of quartz. But we did manage to get all the walls in place, at least uh, before we start putting the honeycomb pattern in place. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to bring up all the towers to the right heights that I wanted to. I am bringing these towers back here a little bit higher. That way, when we're looking over there for sight lines and stuff like that, you'll see these top towers up here a little bit more. And this tower, it's going to match these towers because I don't want anything really coming up to here. But things that are also subject to change. Also, is that a piece of floating stone? Okay, no, that totally is. A lot of things around here are subject to change. But anyways, I need to go farm up some more quartz pillars. Back at the storage. And I think... Well, we probably got about three shulker boxes worth of the quartz pillars here. Thankfully for us, we'll be able to trade with the villagers in order to get more. I don't have a whole lot of emeralds left over. But we did manage to get a little bit of uh, quartz pillars. So I'm hoping that that will be enough to continue on the project. So I'm going to be back and forth here for a little while, gathering more resources. But while we're at it, I'm going to go over to the castle again to start building it up. While building up a little bit more of the castle back there, we've also decided that I'm going to start lighting up a little bit of this web to bring it out a little bit. And I think it looks a heck of a lot better looking at this side in comparison to this side. So I'm going to be lighting this up with all the end rods because, you know, we're not struggling with end rods enough. I would say one more night and we'll be done the web, but we got to wait till nighttime. Time to place one of the best sounding blocks in the game in our towers here. Hopefully this is the right spot for this pillar. They just go in here a little bit. I'll get rid of those uh, lines here in a minute, but this is going to go all the way up to the top. That's nice. I think that looks way better than what we had before. It actually really brings out the entire web. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. You don't really see the spider, but I think that's actually a good thing because I feel like spiders are supposed to be hidden in webs. So let's take a look at what this thing looks like from underneath and see if it makes much of a difference down here. Hopefully I don't get ganked on my way down, but I think right here in particular, yeah. It's like the perfect spot to be looking up at the web and then you can kind of see the sky with the shaders and stuff like that. Cheeky little nebula. And then we're looking up at the spider. I think this looks awesome. Well, I think we're done with the quartz pillars and we got all of it in place right now. Now I want to go around the sides here and start working on a little bit more of the roof here, going all the way around for our little courtyard here before we move forward with the towers. And then I'll start working on like how we're going to bring these guys up but yellow concrete. And I think it's as easy as basically coming along here, putting in all of our yellow concrete. I think it lines up perfectly with that thing. And then we got to start working on a little bit of the archways. But before we do that, we'll have to put in our lapis with our blue wool. All right, time to start doing the little pattern that we're going to have on the roof here. So I think we skip three and then we do one. Skip three, do another one. 
so on and so forth like we did over there and that will be the honeycomb pattern that we got going up and over basically and when it comes to the outside bits when we're going to lace it on over top of the roofs i'm only going to do the exterior bits i think it'll make our job a little bit easier because i plan to bring these bits together and then wrap them over the roof so if i do both sides things might not line up properly time to use all the lapis we own hopefully we have a lot more lapis and it's going to be required to go around this entire thing but here we go just a few more layers higher these roofs are going to be a little bit shorter than the roofs, uh these roofs but that's okay it's going to kind of stagger in height here but we got ourselves a wandering trader so we just got to find the guy i found him inside the spider hole because these guys have zero self-preservation he wants to be near all the creepers but let's see what we got oh we got ourselves an ender golem very cool looking head we have ourselves a bull rog. i thought that was really cool we got ourselves a cat lantern and armor cross again which is awesome because i need more of his heads anyways part of the ascended uh and then we got some decorative pots and stuff of like that but i don't know if the plant is one that i want to get let's check out these heads starting off the bull rog, i think this guy looks absolutely amazing Thought he looks really cool, and I know there's a lot of you guys who are Lord of the Rings fans out there. Could be something you guys want to showcase on your Hall of Fame plots. We have ourselves the End Golem. I thought this guy was really cool as well. Very purple looking head. Looks like almost like it's wearing like a mask. You guys have already seen the cat, but I'll show you guys it once more. But I think it looks awesome. But yeah, that's the picks from today. But back to the roof because this roof ain't going to finish itself. But doing a little bit more layering on the roof here. I uh, decided to put in the dark oak here because I think that the dark oak actually ties really nicely with the honeycomb pattern up there. And then we put the end rods up here. I'm waiting till nighttime so I can see what that looks like. But I also added something over here that I think looks kind of neat. Utilizing the spore blossoms and the honey, the honey hives, the, the honey boxes, whatever you want to call them. Uh, placing them underneath the bridge and then kind of staggering them like so. Let me know if you guys like that because I'm not 100% sold on it yet, but I would like to incorporate more flowers as we go. It's a little hard to see, but you guys can notice a little bit of the twinkle right there. I think I'm going to be doing this all the way around the castle now. They do look really cool. They look like little uh, miniature stingers, so I want to try and incorporate these. But I think it looked great at night, especially the spider web. if I haven't shown you guys that already. This spider web really pops with all those end rods. So let's do this. Now that we have a little bit more of the detailing work done here, there's something important that we need to address. And don't ask me how, don't ask me why, but there's just an insane amount of sheep in here that we need to get out of the castle grounds so I can actually start working here. So we're going to do that. There's a lot of mobs in here. I don't want to, I don't want to kill them either. Maybe we'll feed them to uh, the spiders as sacrificial uh, sheep, but this is way, way too crazy. Maybe we made ourselves a passive mob farm. Maybe you guys understand this a little bit more better than I do, but this is this is crazy, right? I'm not I'm not losing it. This is just a crazy amount of mobs in a small area. <laughs> we may have lost one. I did tell him if he fell into the hole, it wasn't my fault. Well, I think that's all of them. I don't know what's going on around here, but I know if any more mobs spawn in here, I think I may have made an accidental mob farm or some sort. I don't know. That's the best sound of the game right there. Picking up all the dirt. I've now filled up about, what, six double, uh, six, not double chests, but six shulker boxes full of dirt. But this sound right here, best sound of the game. Brought it all the way down to Y14 now. Now I'm gonna have to bring down these walls right here. Except I don't think our wall is going to have to go all the way down. I want to leave enough roof, uh, enough room down here so I could build my floor at least three, four thick. Uh, given, uh, given that. And then over here, I could fill this in to make it all flat and stuff. But I honestly think that'd be a waste of time. I have to start putting all this stuff back into the storage room though. And repair a little bit of our tools. But I think this looks a lot more clean than what it was before. And not a crazy amount of sheep in here either. Speaking of good sounds. Check this out.
Oh, great. Phantoms. And check it out. We got a little bit of a uh, freaking sheep trying to make his way back in there. Of course. Get that guy out of here. Hold on. Uh, but yeah, anyways, I want to start laying out the interior of this place now that we got this whole thing like basically flattened out. I'm going to work a little bit on these things, flatten these things out. But I have a floor that I would love to work in today just to kind of see how big the main castle needs to be. If I can be not harassed by phantoms right now, please. Get! I am not hitting any of these shots. All right. Also, I'm working on these towers over here. I'm going to start bringing these guys up so we can start bringing them up to the points and everything like that. And then I could do these guys back here and then uh, corresponding. But I think that these towers are really shaping up really nice. And then I might create some really cool like beehives. I think I might have a plan for what we're going to be doing today as in terms of like bees looking like they're out in the uh, the distance. So we'll see how that goes. But before I go ahead and I start addressing a little bit more of these towers back here, I'm actually going to start bringing down the walls over here a little bit just to make things fit a little bit nicer for when I put my floor in place. So let's go ahead and start placing down our pillars. Look how clean this looks all the way down to the uh, level with the ground and stuff like that. That one looks a little bit higher, but I think that's actually is that too high? Are we at Y15 here? Okay, we need to get rid of this. That's my bad. Uh, the doorway and stuff like that doesn't line up with the floor, but that's also because I plan to make this floor fairly thick. Probably going to be about uh, five layers thick for the floor. I want to give myself more room than I really need in order to add as much depth into the floor as I possibly can. So before I move into the towers, I would like to kind of lay out a little bit of the footprint of where the floor is going to be going. A little bit of a segue. We're working on some really cool forced perspective things over here. So from over here, it actually looks like those are small, like little bees out of the corner of your eye. And I would like to do a little bit of forced perspective, making these small bees look like they're flying out of hives from a distance. From up close, they don't look like anything special. And I mean, it is nighttime, but I can show you guys exactly how it's done. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward how these things are done. But I plan to make these into like little miniature hives. So if I can come over here, actually, let's, uh, let's position one back here a little bit. And then we can throw this guy back here. And then all these bees start to look like they're starting to fly out of an area. We can come into here. Put the, the yellow right there. Whoops, not there. We'll pop the yellow down there. Then we'll throw in our lights. And by lights, I mean glass. And then we're gonna try to we're gonna try to get these guys. First try. Yeah. And then we'll put the lichen behind, because the lichen actually looks a lot like the veins on the bee. So we'll just kind of throw these guys back here. And then I'm interested to see what this looks like at night. But I think this looks like a really cool scene of a bunch of bees in the background. As we fly away, you'll see like a little bit more of them. Of course, it's raining right now, of course. But it looks like a bunch of bees flying out of there. And I think that looks spectacular. And I mean, with shaders, it actually looks pretty damn cool with the uh, with the lichen in behind there, despite it being an absolute storm out here. But looking behind me, they look like bees. You can kind of see the wings a little bit better back there. It's very, very cool. So putting that concept a little bit on hold, I've done a little bit of the mapping out of where the first room is going to be. So this is going to be kind of like the throne room for bees. Uh, I've done a little bit of centering here to kind of see where everything's going to be lining up and seeing exactly how to do my walls afterwards. And then I'm going to be pushing everything back here beyond the uh, beyond the andesite over to the yellow terracotta where we're going to be like opening things up a bit. But I need to start working a little bit more on these towers so I can incorporate more of these little like bee designs where they're like kind of like flying out type deal. So we need to kind of do a little bit more of this on all of these guys now. Now we've got the outline of all of our roofs here. Going to start filling it in with a little bit of blue. I need to drape down those there a little bit too. And then we can start incorporating our light. But I want to start progressively working them up a bit better so i can start working out the rest of this castle uh cool. if i were to take a little bit of a random guess i'm gonna say that we definitely don't have enough uh, lapis in order to do this build here because there's a lot more roofs that i need to build up here so we're gonna definitely have to be trading for more of that cool. uh wool wool won't be an issue at all but let's go fill this thing out now well with all said and done i'm just under two stacks of lapis which is definitely not going to be enough for the center roof so at least we made it through this phase 
now to come by and place our trap doors over here so we can hide those lights like we did over there and to place the end rods in place so we can bring out the towers a little bit better and then while we're up here we'll place down a little bit of our yellow concrete as well on the little bit of an overhang here so we should be able to just bring this stuff down and then at night this will look epic well we're getting a little bit more of the towers done up today which is super awesome but we have ourselves a wandering trader so you know what that means it means we get to see exactly what we get today all right what do we got we have the ender dragon woman we have the netherrack creature oh we got a lot of cool ones we have a cake book power oh we got power armor nice we have uh kratos from the the god of war and we have a brown mushroom bag looking at these guys there's nothing really special that i want to check out there but time to lay these things out don't mind the tornado in the background don't mind the tornado in the background all right so power armor from fallout if you guys have uh, watched that i think this looks awesome this is supposed to be like a t60 power armor we have cake books which i think turned out phenomenal so a little bit something with a little bit more color to it we have kratos so that's really cool i thought this was a very well done skin brown mushroom bag to go along with our red mushroom bag they have the the share like the same texture and stuff and then we have this netherrack creature that i thought was really cool with like the crown and stuff like that and then for i guess for those of you guys who haven't seen it this is the ender dragon woman which i thought was a really well done head but that is the selection that we got from that guy i knew the day was gonna come but we're officially out of lapis i got this one over here done it was almost two stacks of lapis but i'm gonna going to need probably another two four six more stacks of lapis give or take in order to finalize this entire uh like roof up here not to mention the roof that we got to do over here as well that's gonna uh, extend backwards so we're kind of in trouble now and with a little bit more villager trading that brings us up to eighty-two thousand villager trades since we started this project so that's lovely but i think we finally have enough lapis in order to potentially finish what we started today let's hope and with all those towers in the back finally done it adds a little bit more depth to the whole castle area here as we fly on in here there will be other towers and stuff like that too but we actually made it by with all of our lapis now time to start framing out the windows so we can put our honeycomb patterns on the center here like we do over there time for the glass now so what we're going to be doing is obviously the checkerboard pattern with the brown and the orange going all the way up i think it'll look really cool just like that i think it gives off that really cool like honeycomb pattern for the for that and then of course we'll have like our bees like kind of flying out of these like honeycomb patterns these are supposed to be like symbolic of being like hives and there you have it we're finally done a little bit with the towers in place here got all four of them didn't run out of resources not once yeah right uh anyways i got a little bit of those guys going on i still need to bring up all the end rods there's still a lot to work to be done a lot of detailing a lot of texturing all that sort of stuff but i'll focus on that later because i have a lot of stuff going in the middle of this castle that i need to start working out first so one of those things is going to be this floor right here got a little bit of this carved out this floor is also going to tell me exactly where my walls need to go as well so probably putting the floor in place is probably going to be our best bet uh before we start figuring out where our walls and stuff are gonna go but that is all the time that we have for today i hope to see you guys in the next episode if you guys liked the episode please leave a like maybe consider subscribing but until next time i hope you guys take care and i'll see you guys in the next one